our mission statement, and I have a copy of it to give everybody if you'd like it, but our mission statement is this. California Election Integrity Project is a group of citizen volunteers seeking to fulfill our responsibility to actively participate in our republic and ensure the integrity of the process that protects our freedoms and our way of life. We seek to protect government of, by, and for the people by maintaining an active role in the part of government that empowers us with our most basic right, the right to choose our representatives by vote. The goal of our volunteers is to become active participants in the entire election process, from overseeing the integrity of the voter rolls to working to ensure that each citizen's vote is counted fairly. So basically, my metaphor for us is that we're the sunshine. All of these things that happen that threaten the integrity of the process, whether it's mistake or apathy, carelessness, ignorance, or intention, happen in those little dark corners where nobody sees it happen. So if we are the sunshine, if we light up those corners, if we have eyes on the process, if we have educated electorate out there that knows what should and should not be happening and draws attention to the fact when they see something amiss, then we can stop a lot of what happens, whether it's intentional or just by error. We are nonpartisan. <coughs> we don't have a political agenda. We're not trying to get one side or the other in. We're, we're of all different political stances. People in EIP come from every part of the spectrum. What unites us is that we want and we are working for fair and honest elections so that we the people can truly determine our future. We believe in one vote, one citizen, one vote. That is our motto and that's all we're after. So one of the things we do is we work in concert with the Registrar of Voters. We have 1.4 million voters in the county of San Diego. We have 63 people working for the Registrar of Voters. Now, how can they do all of that work? How can they look at those voter rolls? How can they do what it takes to really keep things clean? It's an impossibility. They do everything they can. They work very hard. They try very hard. But it's just simply not possible without help. And that's one of the ways that we step in to do that. It's one of the ways that we as citizens need to do that if we want to keep the integrity of our own votes is to be assisting in the process. So we work in concert with the Registrar of Voters by assisting in cleansing those voter rolls. And then we re recruit and train poll workers one of the ways to assure that you have to go all absentee ballot, which is horrible thought, uh, would be if people didn't step forward and say, yeah, I'll, I'll staff the polls once every two years or once every four years. I'll work at the polls. And if we don't get enough people working in the polls, they'll have to close them and say, well, I guess you're going to have to vote by mail because we don't have enough volunteers. So we're helping to recruit those volunteers and, and, and let people know how important it is for them to step forward and do a civic duty and say, yes, I'll work at the polls. Then we train them. Because of the number of poll workers there are just in our county, you can't get them together in, in a place, and, and the county, the training is, is just monumental. So the county does most of their training online, but because of a shortage of volunteers, they don't even require you to finish the training in order to work the polls, which means that we have some people out there working the polls who don't know all the rules, who don't know all the laws, and so they're making mistakes just because of ignorance. So we're trying to solve that by training voters uh, people who are working at the polls a lot better than just the online training hit and miss that they get through the county. We also recruit and train poll observers. This is a really important thing that the law in California, and I guess pretty much all over the nation, allows parties, candidates, and individual citizens the right to observe what's going on at the polls. Not interfere, not get in the way, but just observe. Be the sunlight, be the eyes on the process. And parties and candidates don't take the opportunity to do that very often. And so we are attempting to fill in those holes and have eyes on the process so that when things are happening that are wrong, rather than letting them happen and then report it later, or even worse, letting them happen and not even get reported, we'll stop it before it starts. So the next step for you is if this has gotten you convinced at all that maybe you should attempt to know more, get a little bit more uh, informed about the problems and some of the ways that we propose to solve it. 
We ask that you attend an application meeting. At that application meeting, we will explain in detail the what and how of EIP. So we will go through all of the volunteer uh, possibilities. I've only mentioned one or two to you today. We have 18 different ways that people can get involved on our team and offer their skills and things that they're interested in doing, all of which are very, very essential to clean up our system. Also at that application meeting, we will fully explain each of those opportunities so that you can make an informed decision about the right EIP tasks and teams for your own interests and for your own availability and your own skills. And then the last thing you'll do at that meeting is be offered an application, it's a volunteer application, to fill out and tell us where you want to be part of the team. Until we have a completed application, we don't know how you wish us to use your volunteer time. And you need to attend one of these meetings in order to receive the application. Now, I'm willing to work one-on-one -on -one with people. If they can't work it out to get to one of our meetings, I'll go to your house and I'll hold an individual meeting for one person. I hold meetings <coughs> on a weekly basis in somebody's living room where they've invited three or four friends to come and we do it that way. There's lots and lots of ways to get informed and get that application meeting and get on board with us. You don't have to wait for a big training that gets set up, okay? But <clears throat> we do ask that you um, at least explore that possibility. Um, and then further training, that depends on what you've signed up to do, okay? Um, everybody wants to know, well, when am I going to get trained for all these things? Well, it depends on what you decided to do. If you want to help us go through the voter rolls and help to, to find the anomalies there, you won't go to any more further big trainings because when you receive the portion of the voter rolls that you're going to work on and you'll get a very small chunk and then we just continue to revolve as you have the time to work on them. The instructions will be sent to you in writing with a disc. You'll know exactly what to do step by step and you won't even have to leave your living room to help us out. And you can do your own time on your own computer. If you're going to work or observe at the polls, then we do offer you a two-hour training which we'll set up in April or May, and we'll set up 12 throughout the county. You can attend whichever one is closest to you and works best in your schedule. And you'll walk out of that training with information that will really make you feel good about what you know, including a little flip chart that is just spectacular. That will be an instant way for you to get right to um, one of the election codes that, that you're concerned about and whatever it is that you're seeing. And, and uh, we try to do that closer to the election so you don't have the forget factor involved. But we need to build the team now so that we know who's on it before it's time to do that. Um, if you're going to do one of our other tasks, you know, we have a research team, we have people working on legislation, people working on shepherding the military ballots so we don't have 60% of our military disenfranchised as we did in 2010. So there's all kinds of uh, different things that we're doing in EIP. So you are enthusiastically invited to join our team. Uh, and what I ask that you do today, if you want to hear more, if you want an opportunity to find out if there is something there that you are willing to help us with, um, please give me on the sign-up sheet, which I'll pass around, please give me your contact information and I'll let you know when these meetings are coming up. And then please attend an application meeting as soon as you can or arrange one with me. Arrange to have people come to your house and do it. Uh, arrange for me to come to your house and do it one-on-one. -on -one. Whatever works for you, we can do that. I hope you'll also take one of our brochures. It has my contact information in it, and it also tells you a little bit more about our organization and gives our website, so you can go to the website, check us out, see what it looks like to you, and, um, and that will be very helpful. Other ways that you can help. I love this statement. Because this is an overwhelming thing, and every morning I wake up and think, oh my gosh, it's, it's more huge than I can even imagine. And every morning I have to pick myself up and say, take a deep breath and keep going. I'm only one. But I am one. I cannot do everything. But I can do something. And I will not let what I cannot do interfere with what I can do. It's a great statement by Sir Everett Hale. And the bottom line is that we may not be able to do this much, but we can do this much as an organization, as individuals, we can do this much. When I uh, was growing up in church, we used to sing a song, and one of the lines said, one man's hand can't do all these things, but if two and two and 50 make a million, we'll see that day come around. 